All right. Um, the second layer of social organization. Um, so we're going to go and continue with this idea of anti-hero zombie look in general. Um, so basically what I previously described is having a band uh, on your hands. And a band is very, very similar to a cult. Um, let's see, how should I best explain it? You know what, we'll use the same example. Um, now let's say instead of just having a bunch of dumb drunk people, you know, sing songs about a zombie looking general and uh, dressing up like one and, you know, hooring and hollering and blah, blah, blah. Um, we now begin to give rank to these people. So it's not like something they just get drunk. You know, think of the South Park episode where they, like, reenact the Civil War when they're drunk, right? So, like, the North fights the South all over again, and everybody's trash, and everybody fires blank muskets at each other, and, you know, it's all a bunch of fun. And... After, uh, everybody gets really, really drunk, then... Then the reenactment happens, but when people aren't drunk, when all of a sudden everybody woke up, they're like, oh, shit, I gotta go to work, man, shit. Uh, fuck, like, I gotta go talk to the missus, like, I gotta go home and talk to my wife and shit. Um, you know, I'm not gonna fucking do this stupid-ass, like, reenactment now. <clears throat> and that's basically the limits of power of a band. Um, a band is a fun time, a band is a great time, a band is something, you know, a theme that you, you know, play with when you're drunk and fucked up. But, now if you want this theme to, like, slowly bleed over to, like, the rest of the time because it's really about how much time you occupy for followers and how you structure their time and how you manage their time and how you direct their time, energy, and effort. If you're able to like regimentally manage a person or a group's time, then you basically have control over that group. Um, so, uh, we're going to stick to the same topic of an anti-hero zombie general. And now you begin to give rank to these different people who go to your shows. You can divide that rank however you want, but uh, most of the time, like, rank can be divided by, like, participatory kinds of things. Um, so let's say there's, like, a core group of people, maybe 7 to 12 people. And this is like, you know, your like cabinet, your like board of directors, your like whatever. Um, this close group of confidant, confidants is now responsible for raising the money to purchase a pig every two weeks and, you know, holding this pig roast and getting the beer and blah, blah, blah. Um, and then you're going to have another layer over this. Kind of like an onion with another group of people that, you know, work and or help, um, this group of, you know, confidants. Um, and that group could be responsible for going to meetings once a week or maybe once a month. Confidants meet once a week. Again, this is about a level of commitment and repeated commitment of over time. Um, Let's see, what else? Uh, so, this next level can basically be able to recruit a bunch of other people. Um, let's see, how should I best explain it? Um, now, this group can basically begin to recruit other recruiters. And... You know, we can go into a little bit further than just normal recruiting. Um, you know, we're going to talk about, like, breaking down people's, like, social identities, um, what they think of themselves. Um, one of the first steps is to kind of make them wear different clothing. And this ties in with another level of rank. The way people dress themselves 
And if you can basically, you know, tell somebody to wear something and they wear it, like, that's a huge level of social power. Like, when I was in high school, like, decking somebody in the fucking face and repeatedly punching them in the middle of a huge social group is, like, you know, a demonstration of social power. Like, in the adult world, like, getting somebody to wear another uniform day in and day out is a huge level of social power. Um, affecting what people eat and affecting what people wear um, is a over time, and not just over time, I mean, it really changes, like, how you think quickly. Um, you know, common examples we can think of are, you know, the police and military. Like, it could be a regular-ass looking guy. If he was wearing, sh like, baggy-ass shady clothes, you could think he was, like, a crack dealer. But if he was wearing a police officer's uniform, you'd vastly think differently of him. <sighs> Same thing with firefighters, paramedics, etc. Um, now, if you take this concept onto a, like, cohesive organization, um, the first level of recruitment, basically making wear, like, shitty clothes that says he's a recruiter, he's, like, a lower level than everybody else, and, you know, most people will kind of crawl on the treadmill. Uh, sociopaths, on the other hand, will rapidly notice the treadmill and think about how do I get these people to crawl on my treadmill. Um, but the majority of people who want like a certain level of social approval are able to see the tread, or, or actually not, they're not able to see the treadmill. They basically walk on the treadmill, um, and that's basically what you want. You want a bunch of new recruits to basically start walking on your treadmills. Want them to wear your clothes, sweep your floors, basically eat the food you provide, and you know, etc., etc., etc. And you basically have to find ways to make these people give back. Um, and what I mean by that is, if you have a warehouse full of hippie bums, quickly you'll find it to be very draining. And if you're the one trying to take care of everybody, then you'll quickly tire the shit out of yourself and you'll hate everybody probably snap and like kill a lot of people um but we're gonna try to not have that outcome um the idea is to sit back and do absolutely nothing other than manage people don't lift a goddamn finger don't cook a single meal for yourself i mean hell don't even wipe your own asshole get some cute blonde to wipe your asshole on your behalf that's basically what you have to do if you want to manage a warehouse full of people, don't do a goddamn thing, but project you as the most important being in this warehouse. How? Easily. Have them sit in a group circle and have them listen to you talk for hours and hours and hours. If you should run out of things to say, videotape yourself and project your videotape to these people for hours and hours and hours. Try to say as much as you can without absolutely saying anything, but at the same time sound very, very attention-grabbing at the same time. Um, get these people to basically not sleep for a while. Like, sleep, uh, or actually, um, sleep deprivation is an awesome tool. Sleep deprivation can basically break down somebody's um, critical factor, the guardian at the gate, and basically make your ideas a lot more acceptable. 